In this lecture, we will continue with the rules of probability. And we are going to look at dependent and independent events. Now, when the occurrence of one event influences the probability of the occurrence of another event, we can say that the two events are dependent. And then, of course, on the other hand, if the occurrence of one event does not influence the occurrence of the other event, we say that the two events are independent. So from this, we can derive the definition for independent events. We can say that events A and B are independent if the conditional probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, and the same for the conditional probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. That means the probability that A will take place, given that we know that B took place, is just the same as the probability of A. So whether B took place or did not take place, it will not influence the probability of event A. Now, if you remember the definition for conditional probability, we can use that to derive to the product rule for probabilities. Conditional probability says that the probability of A given B of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. So we can solve from this that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And in a similar fashion, we can also say that the probability of A and B can be written as the probability of B given A times the probability of A. Now, when we use the definition of indep independent events, we can write the product rule for independent events as follows. The prob probability of A and B is just a product of the two probabilities. So this is a special case of the product rule. When A and B are independent, then the product rule simplifies to just the product of the two probabilities. And we can also use this as a test for independence. So if you find the probability of A intersecting B, and it is the same as the product of the two individual probabilities, then you know that your two events are independent. Now, a classical example of independent and dependent events is the sampling with and without replacement. Now, consider that you have a container with eight identical balls. Five of these balls are blue and three are red. And we define the following events. BI is that a blue ball is selected in the ith draw and RI a red ball is selected in the ith draw. So this is your container and you have five blue balls and three red ones. So we select um, one of those balls randomly, note the color, and then when we do sampling with replacement, we place the ball back after we've noted down the color, and then we select a second ball. So if you select two balls with replacement, we want to find the probability that you select two red balls. So we want to find the probability that the first one is red and the second one is red. Now if we do sampling with replacement, then this, the outcome of your first selection will not influence the probability to get a red one in your second selection. So we can say that we are working with independent events and therefore we can make use of the special um, product rule and we can write the probability of the intersection as the product of the individual probabilities. Now because we have three red balls in uh, a total of eight, the probability that the first one will be red is 3 over 8 and 
I note the color, place it back, so the probability that the second one will be red is also 3 over 8, and then we get 9 over 64. Okay, so we can take this example a little bit further. If you select two balls with replacement, find the probability that you select one red and one blue ball. So we want to find the probability. Let's say that the first one is red and the second one is blue. Or the first one can be blue and the second one red. Okay, so what we have here in effect is we have two mutually exclusive events. This event here and this event here are mutually exclusive because they cannot happen simultaneously. Now, if you remember the addition rule, the probability of the union of two mutually exclusive events is just equal to the sum of the probabilities of the two events. So we can write this as the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event. Okay, and now we make use of the product rule. We make use of the product rule because we now have the intersection um, of events. And we will make use of the special product rule for um, independent events because we are doing sampling with replacement. The events are independent. So we can write this as the probability or as the product of the individual probabilities. Okay, so what is the probability that the first ball I select is red? Now we've got red, uh, three red balls in a total of eight, so that probability is three over eight. The probability that the second ball is blue, we have five balls out of eight that are blue, so that probability will be five over eight. And then the same on this side. Probability that the first one will be blue is five over eight. The probability that the second one is red is 3 over 8 and then we get our final answer of 30 over 64. Now we can redo this previous example for sampling without replacement. So if we do sampling without replacement we are going to work with dependent events. Now suppose that this is your container and that you have your five blue balls and you have three red ones. So if I do sampling without replacement I select one of the balls randomly and then I do not replace that ball. So now the composition within my container changed. I now no longer have eight balls. I've got seven of which two are red and five are blue. So if we now want to find the probability that we select two red balls, then it will be the probability that the first one is red and the second one is red. And now we make use of the product rule again, but now we are making use of the product rule for dependent events. So we write this as the probability that the first one is red times the probability that the second one is red, given that the first one was red. Now what is the probability that the first one is red? That probability is 3 over 8. If the first one was red, what is the probability that the second one will be red? Now if the first one was red, we are left with a total of 7 balls in the container, and of those 7 balls only, two are red. Okay, and that then brings us to our final answer of 6 over 56. If you select two balls without replacement, find the probability that you select one red and one blue ball. So again, 
we want to find the probability that one is red and one is blue. So it can be the first one red and the second one blue, or the first one blue and the second one red. So we have the probability of the union of two mutually exclusive events. Therefore, we can write it as the sum of the probabilities of the two events. And then in this step, we make use of the product rule for dependent events. And the probability that the first one is red is 3 over 8. The probability that the second one will be blue, given that the first one was red. So we have seven balls left in the container, and of those seven balls, five are blue. So that is the probability that the second one will be blue if the first one was red. And then in a similar way, for the second part of this equation, the probability that the first ball is blue will be 5 over 8. If the first ball was blue, what is the probability that the second one will be red? So again, we have 7 balls left. Of those 7, 3 are red. And that gives us our final answer of 30 over 56. Okay, so this was then on dependent and independent events.